Today we will apply the Biosevert's law, the law that allows us to calculate the strength of the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire and we'll calculate the magnetic field due to a straight wire. So here is what we have. Imagine you have a straight wire which has a length as shown over here and we want to calculate the magnetic field at this point P which is at some distance A. Now this might look a little bit odd to you as in I have not put in the length of the wire but instead I have put in the values of alpha and beta, the angle subtended by these two lines. Well there are reasons for that and the simple reason is our final answer that we are going to derive it's going to be a much simpler form and also will be a form that you can remember if we put in a form of alpha plus alpha and beta rather than telling you what the length of the wire is and then telling you what this length must be and everything all right so this is the given problem alpha and beta are the values that keep changing depending upon where the point p is and so for some arbitrary values of alpha and beta we need to figure out what this magnetic field is and here is the Bouillot savoir that we have talked about and this only works as long as we deal with small tiny current elements all right so let's begin so to calculate this let's take a very tiny current element somewhere i'm going to start with a tiny current element somewhere over here Imagine that this length from here to here, let's give it some length, let's call that as y and this additional length from here, this, this, this one, is a dy. You can think of dy as a tiny current carrying wire, okay, it has a current i and the first step is to calculate the magnetic field at this point only due to this part, portion. So let me draw that line. It's going to be from here to here. Right. Okay. And let's call this angle some arbitrary angle. Let's call that angle as theta. So if you use Bouillot Savoir, we can now calculate what the magnetic field at this point only due to this current carrying wire, this small dy which I have selected in green. So that magnetic field dB at that point in magnitude is going to be mu0 divided by 4 pi times I dL which is going to be dy in this case div into sine of the angle between dy vector and this r vector and that angle is 90 minus theta can you see that this angle is what I'm talking about this is the angle that I'm supposed to use over here the angle between the dy and the r vector and that angle is just sine of 90 minus theta so I'm gonna put a 90 minus theta over here divided by this distance squared so let me give us some names to it let me call this point as point A and this is point P so I have to divide by AP squared but AP is just it's, it's a right angle triangle I hope you can see this AP let's call this as B no not B let's call this as P <laughs> uh, no no not P uh, let's call it as X alright so look at triangle APX <clears throat> you can see that AP squared is AX squared plus XP squared Pythagoras right so that's just Y squared so this is going to be just Y squared plus A squared and what is the direction of the magnetic field due to this current carrying wire small element at this point well the direction is given by DL cross R DL or in our case DY is in this direction what decides the direction of dy? It's the current. Current decides the direction of dy. And our r is in this direction, as you can see. That's the direction of r. So if you do a d, dy cross r, and if you use your right hand rule, you know, you have to cross in this direction, to cross this way. And if you use your right hand rule, you will see now that that goes into the screen. And therefore, we know that this magnetic field is going to be into the screen 
And what we need to calculate now is the magnetic field due to each and every section of this wire, all the way from here to there, all the way from one end to other. And I'm pretty sure you can understand where we're going to be going from there. That's going to call for some integrals. So let's just refine this a little bit. You get dy cos theta divided by y square plus a square. Now before you do any sort of integration, this is going to be something that you have to remember in general. Before you do an integral, try and look at the direction first. Because if each and every section does not give you the magnetic field in the same direction, you can't do the integral just like that. It's going to be a vector integral and things are going to be messy. So you better take care of the directions first. Let's look at different different current elements. What if I take a current element over here? Can you imagine what direction the magnetic field would be? Well, notice that dy would still be in the same direction. dr would now be in this direction. dy cross, dr, dy cross r would be <coughs> in the same direction. It will be into the, into the screen. And in fact, you can take this anywhere you want. You, you take it over here if you want. This, imagine this is your dy. The dy would be in this direction because i remains the same. And look, r will be in this direction. Again, you cross. And notice if you cross it again, you get into the, into the screen. So <clears throat> that's very nice. Every element is going to give me the magnetic field into the screen. So let me just write that down. There is another way in which you can look at the direction of the magneti ma <clears throat> magnetic field. You can use the right hand clasp rule. If this is, for example, if this is the current carrying wire, then you clasp it this way. And if you clasp it, notice that the magnetic field runs in this direction, circles. And over here, you draw tangents. Did I get the direction of the magnetic field at every point? And if you draw the tangent at this point, notice that it goes into the screen, away from you, towards me, into the screen. So the same thing is going to happen there as well. So if you use a right-hand rule, right-hand clasp rule this time we call that, then the magnetic field circles like this. And at this point, so let me redraw that circles this oh ah ah the magnetic field circles this way and at this point over here if you drew a tangent that tangent would leave it into the screen you can see that it's very difficult for me to draw that but it's into the screen okay <coughs> all right so let's get rid of all those things all right, anyways, it's a good thing that every single element is going to produce a magnetic field in the same direction. And it's for that reason, we are now ready for integral. So let's integrate this bad boy. The total magnetic field B at point P is just going to be the integral of dB. So let's pull out all the constants. You get a mu naught divided by 4 pi is a constant. I is a constant. But theta is not a constant. I'm pretty sure you can see that. If I take different values of dy, if I change dy, I, take, I change the position of dy, I put, a posi I put dy here, or I put a dy here, notice now that theta will change, okay? Theta decreases. In fact, when dy is over here, theta becomes zero. Can you see that? In fact, theta keeps changing, and the, th the extreme values for theta will be alpha and beta. Okay, so we're going to integrate this and uh, you cannot pull out the cos theta so there's a cos theta inside and you have a dy divided by a square plus y square okay we have the integration almost ready except for one tiny tiny problem is that we have a theta here so we have two two options from here onwards either to convert this integral in terms of y or convert the entire integral in terms of theta and personally i'm going to prefer theta because that's the whole reason I'm, I'm talking in terms of angles over here because the answer is going to be pretty simple. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert everything in terms of theta and to do that, look at this triangle carefully, A, P, X. I want to get rid of this A square plus Y square, which is nothing but the hypotenuse, All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, div I'm going to, I'm going to take cos theta. If you look at cos theta, you can see that's going to be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is just a divided by the hypotenuse. It's y square plus a square. And from this, I can define what y square plus a square is. y square plus a square turns out to be square this whole equation. So y square plus a square turns out to be just a square divided by cos square theta. That's good. That's very good. 
Because now I'm going to replace that over here. But then I have to get rid of dy. So I have to come up with another formula, another trigonometric ratio that has y in it. And this time I'm going to prefer tan theta. And try to understand the only reason I'm doing that is because it becomes very easy for me to differentiate. So if you take tan theta, for example, in this example, tan theta is just the opposite side y divided by the adjacent side a. So it's going to be y divided by a. So I can now differentiate this out and I get secant squared theta d theta by dy equals 1 divided by a. And that tells me that dy is just a secant squared theta d theta. Amazing, because now I can pull this and substitute over here. Okay, let's do this. So this is going to be equal to the integral of mu naught i cos theta divided by 4 pi a squared plus y. Oh, no, I have to get rid of that a squared plus y squared. For that, I'm going to substitute a squared divided by cos squared theta. And then I have a dy here for which I'm going to substitute this guy. a squared, sorry, not a squared, a secant squared theta d theta. And what are going to be the limits of my integral? Well, what is the smallest value of theta? Well, I'm, since I'm defining theta this way, this is going to be my positive angle. This is going to be my negative angle. That means the starting point has to be over here. So, I mean, just think about it. If you define your angle this way, your start is going to be somewhere over here. So I have to start from somewhere here. And notice, this line represents theta equal to zero. So this line over here must represent theta equals minus beta. I hope you can understand that. <clears throat> Look at this line. I repeat, I repeat, try to try to listen to me carefully. This green line which I've drawn, that is arbitrarily chosen as the angle theta. In doing so, Look, I'm measuring theta with respect to this horizontal axis, okay? And I'm choosing clockwise as uh, my positive angle. Clockwise is positive, and therefore the anti-clockwise is negative. I have to start from here, so I, have, I start from negative beta, go all the way to zero, and then go all the way to positive alpha. So that's going to be my limits. I have to start from negative beta and go all the way to plus alpha. So we're gonna select this guy. <clears throat> Let's solve this now. This turns out to be the integral from minus beta to alpha times mu naught by four pi. You have, <clears throat> let's see, A cancels. We have I, we have cos cube theta. We have a denominator A and we also have a secant squared theta d theta which eventually has to simplify from minus beta to alpha mu naught by 4 pi i this is just cos theta d theta divided by a <sighs> look at this now this is a very simple integral integral of cos is just sine so we're almost done so we get mu zero by 4 pi times i times sine theta and I have to start from minus beta and go all the way to alpha. All I have to do now is substitute the limits and so the total magnetic field at point B is going to be equal to mu zero by four pi I into sine alpha minus sine of minus beta, which I'm going to call it as beta and pull that minus sign out and make this plus. I hope you understood what I did there. Okay, divided by A. Ta-da, there we have it. That is our equation. We have found the expression for the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire over here. Let's look at some special cases in the next episode. Stay tuned.